Hi, this is Rick from 4 Community, creating community spaces so you can connect with others and also with God. In the wake of more than a year, like can we say almost two years, of social distancing and social isolation and lockdowns, We're noticing that social skills are at an all-time low, and we're seeing something that we weren't expecting as we're coming out of this and as we're beginning to come back to some kind of normality. We're seeing an increase in escalation due to, now get this, atrophied social skills. I'm not making that phrase up, and I'm not making this stuff up. Atrophied social skills is a real thing. We forget how to get along with each other when we're in public. Instead, the public space is a little bit more aggressive and people are a little easier to trigger. A survey by the American Psychological Association finds this. Most respondents are still uneasy about returning to in-person interaction because they just feel uneasy. They just feel uncertain. They feel unsafe. Rising tempers seem to be a symptom of atrophied social skills. Now, why in the world am I starting here? Because I think I've got some good news for us. You know, this means that one of the core skills that we could use more and we could work on a little bit more today is personal de-escalation. Yeah, I don't mean having the skills to know how to de-escalate somebody else, how to calm somebody else down when they seem to be at a good... That's not what I'm talking about here. I mean, we're seeing a greater need for individuals, for me, myself, and I, to know how to de-escalate myself. You know how to de-escalate yourself, to calm ourselves down and be able to recognize safety and be a safe person for other people. I've got a great question to launch off this discussion to get our heads around where we're going with the Bible text for today in this video. If you're watching with someone, even if you're not, would you consider pausing the video and trying to answer this question? What do you do to calm yourself down when you feel like you've just been triggered? This video is based on Colossians chapter 1 verses 21 to 22. And in this text, the authors are dealing with a church who has been escalated. We're about to read some life-giving theology here, incredible theology about what occurs in us when we become followers of Jesus, where our starting point was and how we've been changed to become this new thing that's that's glorious and wonderful in relationship with, with God. It's an awesome text. I love the text. Let's not miss the context, though. Let's not miss the why behind why this passage is in the text right here. This text is partly a strategy that the authors have in mind, namely Paul has in mind, to help the Colossian church, the Jesus followers in the city of Colossae, I think it was called, to find some calm, to help them calm down so they could act less aggressively, namely toward Paul. Colossians chapter 1 verse 21 to 22. This includes you who were once far away from God. You were his enemies separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. Oh, hello. What type of smoothie would you like? Kiwi, please. Coming right up. Okay. Here you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, hey, have you watched the four community video yet? No. Make sure you look in the background for all the cool characters. Oh, and don't forget to watch this week's episode of Connect HQ. Okay. Here's where I'm going with this video. Here's the point that I want to make in this video right here about this text. Perspective. The trick to avoid being escalated. In this passage, we're seeing a reminder given to the original readers and to us about where they and where we came from. This is so important because, as I see it, the Colossian church was attempting to correct Paul about how he presented the gospel 
to people and really to try to restrict him from the kind of ministry that he was doing, which, by the way, was the kind of ministry that actually benefited the Colossian church. They were trying to help him clean up his approach. So this passage is in part a little bit of pushback, a reminder of who they were before they met Paul. It's an attempt to soften the Colossians so that they can be less triggered. This text gives us a great opportunity to not only celebrate the transition that happens when we choose to follow Jesus and dig into a little bit of theology, but it also gives us an opportunity to see something else. Changing our perspective can be so powerful to help us avoid being personally escalated by the people around us who are causing us so much grief in this moment where we're experiencing social skills atrophy. Here are two points I see from the text that will help us to de-escalate ourselves as we focus on a different perspective. First of all, remember your weaker moments. The text says, this includes you who were once far away from God. You were his enemies, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. Before we connect with Jesus, we are already disconnected from God. This is sad. Actually, more than disconnected from God. In a certain light, certainly in the light of this text, we can be considered enemies of God. Now, what does that mean to be an enemy of God? Is God waging war against us? No. We are, in a sense, waging war against God. Okay, in what sense are we waging war against God? God wants to be connected with us in the deepest possible relationship. However, that's typically not what people want. Generally, people want to live however they want to live. And that lifestyle typically doesn't include following Jesus, at least not the way that he wants us to follow him, which means he's the Lord and he gets to say, Live as though we love him first, and then live as though we love others second. It's more of a selfless kind of loving lifestyle that he's asking for from us. In the sense that we fight against what God wants for us, that puts us up against God as his enemy. We're like, no, God, we don't want a world of love. I want to love myself. I want to do whatever I want to do. And in that case, we are putting ourselves up as an enemy against God. And by the way, historically speaking and biblically speaking, we are so opposed to God that we actually crucified him on the cross. Okay, that's huge. Here's a perspective we can go to when we're considering the people around us and how much they're bugging us due to their social skill atrophy and our social skills atrophy. We have been on a journey to get to where we are right now. You have been on this wonderful journey to get to where you are right now. If you're a Jesus follower, you used to be an enemy of God and you're not anymore. If you're in your 40s, you used to be a teen making choices based on a lack of experience and remember what that was like. If you're a teen, you used to be a toddler taking temper tantrums, sneaking pizza as though no one thought you were looking or stealing treats and hiding wrappers underneath your pillow as though you wouldn't be found out. You, know, you weren't always as wonderful as you are today. You needed a lot of grace. You needed so much grace that Jesus died for you on the cross. That's a lot of grace that you and I needed. Now the people around us that bug us, certainly that are experiencing these atrophied social skills, they potentially can escalate us. And I don't think it's them, I think it's us. When we're escalated, we're not thinking clearly. We're not speaking clearly. We're generally not at our best. If we change our perspective and remember the weakness, our lack of maturity that we came from, that may help us not to get escalated over someone else and think a little bit more clearly. If you're thinking about your own journey and your own weaknesses about where you came from, you may have greater capacity to understand the struggle of the people around you and either give them some grace and some space or to show them a little empathy instead of getting escalated. Perspective can be so important here to remember the weakness that we had come from. Think about it like this. On the one hand, you had your moments of weakness and you needed people around you to show you grace and give you space and help you grow. On the other hand, you may be getting mad at another person's weakness and not showing them the kind of grace that would help them grow that you needed. To bring those two things together, to be that safe space for somebody else and help them to grow, 
change your perspective. Number two, remember the gifts that helped you mature. The text says, now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ. And I totally love this verse because of the word reconciliation. Now, maybe I talk about this word too much when we gather together, but I absolutely love this word. I love it because it's not forgiveness. Forgiveness is slightly self-interested while also self-sacrificing at the same time. What I mean is someone forgives for their own personal health so that they can move on. Now they may be at a loss and they probably are at a loss. They probably had to make some kind of sacrifice, but now they're no longer weighed down and they're no longer stuck in the past. It's, it's totally about healing self in order to forgive. Reconciliation though, that's about the other person. Reconciliation is the invitation back into relationship. Now you and I, even though we were considered enemies of God, for all of the time we spent rejecting his invitation to connect with him and even crucifying him on the cross, just that we're a part of humanity that did that to God, I mean, that's a really big deal. God has not only forgiven us, but he's inviting us back into personal connection with him. That is absolutely huge for me, which is why I love this word reconciliation. Reconciliation is a gift. You may ask for it, but it's not yours to take. If it's not offered, you can't have it. You can only be reconciled to someone that you've wounded if that wounded person chooses to invite you back into the relationship. God has extended to all of us the gift of being connected with him it's our choice to respond or not. The people around us have the potential to escalate us. We can look at them and we can think that the only reason their lives bug us so much is because they're not putting enough effort into growing. They're ignorant, they're lazy, they're intentionally trying to bug you or bug others. And let's not discount any of that because some of that could be very, very true. And all of that may be also true of us, you and me. Maturity and growth in Jesus is largely a gift. I mean, we work on it for sure, but it starts with God's gift of reconciliation. So perspective may help you not to escalate when there's someone around you that's typically getting you escalated. To get where you are today, you didn't do it all your own. There were people in your life that helped you move along. There were people that came into your corner to prop you up. And God was there gifting you with the relationship of forgiveness and grace. You don't get 100% of the credit for being as great as you are today. When you're feeling escalated, on the one hand, you may be feeling that they're not working hard enough. They're lazy. They don't care. They've intentionally tried to be troublesome for you. And on the other hand, you were those things and disconnected from God. And you're as great as you are today because somewhat extended you gifts. So to resolve these two, you can change your perspective to remember the gifts that helped you to mature. That may either help you not to escalate, or in a few cases, it may even help you extend some empathy and be that gift that someone else needs. Here's a summary. Paul was presented with a group of people who had matured and now they believed that they could instruct Paul and correct him about the work that he was doing. And their correction was actually saying, don't go to those people that looked like how we used to look, although they didn't know they were setting up things exactly like that. On the one hand, they were weak and needed Paul's help at one time, but on the other hand, they were telling Paul to stop helping the people that used to look like they did. On the one hand, they matured because of Paul's gifts to them, of his time and presence and the presentation of the gospel. Yet on the other hand, they wanted to restrict others from Paul's time and presence and presentation of the gospel. It doesn't make any sense. In this case, Paul doesn't directly confront the church. He helps them to change their perspective, to de-escalate themselves, and then to help inspire some empathy in them. That's the message that I'm seeing in the text here to keep ourselves from becoming escalated by the people around us and by all of our atrophied social skills. Let's remember a time when we were much weaker than we are today. And let's remember all of the gifts we received to get us to what we are today. Our perspective may help us stay level-headed and may even inspire some moments of empathetic involvement becoming the gift that others need 
to help them mature. That's it from me to you for now. Would you please like, would you please share, would you please subscribe, and would you please reach out and ask for the link to one of our next gatherings for community, creating community spaces so you can connect with others and also with God. See you next time.